Welcome to the CamWax Creative Space. My name is SJ Simpson and today we are demonstrating how to calculate how much wax and fragrance you need when making container candles. It can be very frustrating when making candles, finding out you did not melt enough wax or have way too much left over. With our video today, we will show you how to calculate your requirements as closely as possible. And we'll start with making just one candle and then show you how to apply that to larger batches. Before we get into our topic, just a few notes. We will put the calculations we use today in the description section, and please click that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notice of our new videos. After watching the video, if you have any questions, be sure to pop them in the comments section. So here's what we are going to cover. One, how much wax does your container need to fill it to the desired level? Two, how much fragrance do you need for this candle? Three, how much wax do you need to melt? And hint, it's not the same answer as number one. And four, how do you apply this to a larger batch of candles? Firstly, let's look at determining how much wax our vessel will hold. We are using Golden 464 in today's demonstration, but other waxes can vary, so follow our procedures with your own wax. As we get into our project, just let me mention, we do all our measurements by weight. It is difficult to measure wax flakes using a measuring cup. I mean, sometimes the flakes are loose, sometimes they're jammed into the cup. Um, so as you see in this picture, we have four ounces of unmelted wax by weight, almost overflowing from the measuring cup. And then when melted, still weighing four ounces, but in volume, even more than the four ounces. So we can't stress enough that weight is vital. Uh, you don't need a fancy scale, but a digital scale will give you more accuracy. I've put a link to the one I'm using here in the description down below. If you prefer working in metric, uh, you will get more precision, although a lot of scales don't do those fine decimal points. So in this example on the screen here, where one ounce equals 28.3495, you might just want to round that to 28.3 if your scale does have decimal points. If you're not sure how to do the conversions, Go to Google and just type in one ounce equals how many grams. It'll take care of that for you. So let's fill our vessel with water. Here you will see I filled to where I want the wax to end. Be sure to leave room for the wick to stand up at least a quarter inch above the wax and room for the lid to fit. This is now what we will call our fill line. We are also using our 270 ml cylinder jar. 270 mils is the equivalent of 9.5 ounces, and you will quickly see that this jar does not hold 9.5 ounces of wax. More on that later. Okay, so let's repeat this now with our wax. Now when I pour melted wax in the jar to the same fill line, you will see I've only poured in 7 ounces by weight. Remember our water was 8 ounces. So same volume, different weight, and this all has to do with specific gravity of the wax. And you can see a link to this concept in the description down below. If you have any documentation from your supplier, it might specify what the uh, specific gravity is, but I'm showing you how to determine this yourself. We could just pour wax into all our containers to determine the weight we need, but there is an easier and less messy way to do this. Once you've done this test with your wax yourself, you will know your specific gravity. Remember, I'm using Golden 464. Take your wax weight, divide it by your water weight, and this will give you a fraction. In our example, we had seven ounces of wax, we divided by eight ounces of water, and we came up with 0.875. So I now know that my wax to water ratio is 0.875. So for other jars, other containers, you can determine your water weight simply by putting the water in and weighing, and then multiply by 0.875. So if you have a vessel that takes 12 ounces of water, then you know you only need 10.5 ounces of wax. So now we know how much wax we need for this jar, or do we? 
If you want to add fragrance to your wax, which we usually do, there is another calculation we need to complete. If we calculated our jar needs 7 ounces of wax and then add our fragrance, we're going to have more liquid now than we need. So I'm going to demonstrate this, continue with our 7 ounce jar, and let's work with an 8% fragrance load. If you want to add an 8% fragrance load to your wax, you multiply your amount of wax in ounces by 0 0.08. Now continuing with our 7 ounce candle example, that would be 0 0.08 times 7, which would get you 0.56 of an ounce. So now you've added your fragrance to the liquid wax and you now have 7.56 ounces of liquid, but our vessel only holds 7. So now you will have leftover liquid. So do we make tea lights, you know, maybe make some samples? But what we're trying to do here is to calculate things so we don't have all this excess wax. So let's look at this more closely. Earlier when I told you what we were going to cover today, I told you that your vessel would hold a certain amount of wax and then how much wax you need to melt wouldn't necessarily be the same. So this next step shows you this, this combination of how much wax do I need, how much fragrance to come up with the right amount. So this formula here is going to show you how to calculate how much wax you need to melt. Then when we add the fragrance, we're going to come out with the right amount of wax. So continuing with our 7 ounce example, the wax is going to represent 100% of our requirement. But we want 8% fragrance, so now we've got 108%. So here's the trick. Divide the wax you need by 108%. Now if you've got a calculator that shows the percentage sign, fantastic. If not, just divide by 1.08. So the result of that is 6.48 ounces. So we need 6.48 ounces. And the difference between that and up to the 7 is 0.52 of an ounce. If you want to double check your work, take your 6.48 ounces of wax, multiply by your fragrance load of 0 0.08, and you'll get the 0.52. So 6.48 plus a 0.52. Personally, I would round all those numbers to 6.5 and 0.5. This slide is just showing you a few other fragrance loads, 6% and a 12%. In this chart, I'm just giving you a few more examples of different sized jars. Uh, our water weight might have been 8, 12, or 16, and then I've just carried this forward. So if you want to pause on this part of the video, you can have a look, see how we calculated each of those numbers again. So lastly, how do we apply this to larger batches of candles? I mean, there are times when you just want to make one candle. Maybe it's a special request from a friend, or you're doing a test of a sample that you just received. But most of us are making larger batches, whether for the craft show or a wholesale order. So here on this next chart, I'm going to show you, and I promise this is the last chart, uh, how to do larger batches based on what you know of that one jar that you tested with. In our example, it's that 7 ounce jar again. So I know I needed the 7 ounces to fill that jar to the fill line. I just multiply that by however many candles I'm going to make, divide it by my fragrance load, and then I'll have my fragrance that I need, the wax that I need, and when I put them both together, I should have just the right amount of wax. Of course, there is one fly in the ointment, and that could be if you're using fragrances with different densities. You'll see here in this picture, both these are one pound of fragrance, but a slight variation in the volume. If you're making uh, 16 pounds of wax and threw in a pound of one of these fragrances, you could have a slight variance in volume. So do keep that in mind. Earlier, I mentioned this was a 270 ml or a 9.5 ounce jar, but that it held nowhere near that amount of wax? Well, here's why. It is called 270 ml because if we fill it to the very, very brim uh, with water as our standard, you'll see that it does fill with 270 ml of water. So this video is a bit longer than our usual ones, but understanding how to calculate your wax and fragrance requirements can save you a lot of time and frustration when making up batches. Of course, we do recommend keeping notes on all your calculations so you can refer to them for next time. Thank you for joining in today, and please hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications when we publish a new video. Cheers.